Greetings, family. Welcome to the number one repat podcast, AA Exit the Matrix, anchor.fm slash Anja Africa, as well as YouTube, right? Um, it's been a journey, right? You all have followed. Well, I don't want to say follow. You have come with me to the continent when I went with my son and you've come back to the States with me and um, now it's time for the countdown. So as I'm counting down, I've been dealing with some little, you know, situations and I wanted to share because I'm pretty sure that other parents were experiencing this or they will be experiencing this. And I just wanted to talk about what it's like for me. Um, I've noticed that I haven't necessarily pulled back from caring for my son because he's a young man, you know, but I have pulled back from things that he is generally dependent on me for, right? Like, you know, I'm trying to kind of be on him about maintaining his space, right? Which is always something that I've done, except in the past, you know, when it got really bad, I'd go in his room and that was my excuse to kind of move things around and see what's going on and what he's up to. But, um, you know, I've eased up from doing that. Um, if there's, you know, situations at school where they call and they say, well, you know, he was late or he didn't do this. I have him call and address those things, right? Because this is his last year. So it has to mean something to him. As a matter of fact, graduation is in like three, two days, right? Two days. I was about to say three. Um, and we've had a couple of situations with the car, like where he's locked his keys in the car. You know, he's so busy running behind his friends, which I assume that's what's happening, um, that he locked his keys in the car twice, like twice in one month, right? And, you know, the first time he calls me and obviously he couldn't do it because the insurance information was inside the car um, and the insurance is in my name. Uh, so, you know, I called and I addressed it, but when he did it the second time, I said, no, you know, here's the number you need to call and address this situation because what are you going to do when I'm not here? Right. See, we tend to enable our children. Um, we think that they are not able to do certain things without us. And, um, you know, that that's what parents do. Right. That's what nurturing parents do. Um, but I learned early on with him that there's just certain things like I had to, you know, it's kind of like when you teach them to walk. Right. You hold on to them when they wobbly. But then when they start walking straight, you, you let them go because they need to stand on their own two feet. And that's where we're at again, right? That stage of cutting the apron strings, getting them off the nipple, letting them do things on his own. So um, that's the situation we had recently where, you know, he locked his keys in the car. Then he had a situation where, you know, the battery died on the car. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, call the insurance company. Like, that's why we have insurance. Again, that would have been something that I would have dealt with, but I need to know that he's able to do these things, right? Um, and when you're not keeping your priorities in line, when you're messing around with your friends or you're hanging out and you think that's a priority over what you need to take care of, that that's not going to work because you're going to be the one that has to suffer the consequences. So I've just been kind of like letting him do things on his own and letting him take the initiative. And, you know, I even had him call and check on like some doctor's appointments. Like get your appointments and stuff in line. I have your insurance for you. I need to know that you need to know when you need to go to the doctor. You need to know when you get a checkup. So I'm just like kind of pushing. I've been doing it the last few months since I was home, just having him do more things on his own and having him follow up. Um, so yeah, we had the situation with the battery, you know, then there was a situation with the car where he got a flat tire the other day. Of course, you know, he was hanging out and y'all saw my video about when you want a Pennsylvania back road, keep it moving. Guess where the tire blew out on a back road late at night. And I just, you know, I didn't hear about it to the morning and he was just like, yeah, the, you know, the tire blew out, but I left the car by a friend's house. And I'm like, well, call the insurance. Oh, I'll deal with it in the morning. Okay. 
So, you know, he got up in the morning, he called, um, he actually, his friends actually helped him put a spare, put the spare on because it was too dark to really see, um, you know, and then I'm just going to talk to him about having a to-go kit in the car in case something like that happens again, you know, have a light, have a little red cone, all those little things you would need, um, you know, and it's just different, you know, watching him be able to do things. He even came to me this evening and was like, uh, mom, you know, I went and got a haircut. Could you twitch my hair for me? You know, just last minute, like he always do. And I was like, no, you know, I'm in the middle of something. Um, but we could take some time out tomorrow, get your hair ready for graduation, do everything you need to do. But I just, I need him to get that sense of, you know, and I said, didn't I show you how to twist your hair? And he, he said, yeah, but you still here. You know, like, I want you to do it. I, I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to do it. But, um, you know, I have to get used to not doing things for him as well, right? Because when I'm on the continent and I'm there and I'm going to be so used to keeping on him about dishes and glasses and did you clean up and did you burn up my pan and don't use a fork on my, you know, my, my nice copper set and all it is, I won't have that to do anymore because, you know, he's grown. So I think I feel it in a different way, but I know that me easing off is what's best for him. Um, and I think it's amazing that, you know, he's going to have the opportunity to, to be with his dad full time, right? He and uh, my ex-husband will have the opportunity to increase their bond as men, you know, without any interference from me. Like, you know, we, we think we're not interfering some time, but we are because we just do things differently. So, you know, I'm, I'm really just kind of excited that, that that process is taking place. Um, and I'm just looking forward to it. I'm even like having them get together and come over, you know, come over at some point and get some of these things out of here that they might need for the new location because I, I'm not taking, you know, my, my bench table set and all this stuff. I'm not taking it with me. You see my walls are looking a little bare now because I've started to pack and uh, take things down. And you know, the, the day is approaching, right? The day is approaching. Um, I just wanted to share that with the parents because I know it's not easy, but um, I, I like to think that this is what we prepared them for. You know, this is what all of the hard work was about, right? Getting them to a point where they can be responsible adults. They can walk into their manhood. They can walk into their, their womanhood and you can be proud of them because you know that you gave them the foundation that they needed, right? Um, and I think our trip was an amazing bond and an amazing way. Uh, it was bonding time, right? We increased our bond. Um, but I definitely think it was an amazing way to say, like, this is probably our, our big shindig before you step into your manhood and, you know, mommy steps into the empty nest syndrome type thing, you know? So I just wanted to share that with the parents. I know many of you have children um, that are young adults that may not want to come with you. And, you know, you just have to know that they're going to be okay, right? They have to have their own... Um, lives to live. They have to have their own experiences and they always find their way back to you. You know, um, he'll be starting at junior college. He wants to go to junior college first and then he will continue on to four year. And, um, you know, I already had a talk with him. Like if anybody's pressuring you to do any vaccines or telling you that you have to, you know, um, register with uh, the vaccination clinics before you can get jobs. Do not accept those positions. Don't let anyone force you to do anything you don't want to do. That is very much a personal choice. Um, you know, the military has been calling a lot. So beware of that. I'm almost happy that they have my phone number. Um, so yeah, the Marines have been calling. The Army has been calling. And I guess that's just something they do when boys... Uh, I guess with any, I don't know if they do it with girls. I can't speak on girls because I don't remember it happening to me. Um, but I know with the males, they seem to like really be on them about joining the military. Um, and of course, you know, I think it would be an amazing opportunity for travel, but I don't know how I feel about the state of this country and my child defending it at this point. I, I don't I don't see a place for him in that, um, but that is very much his choice. Um, and we've discussed it and that's not what he wants to do. You know, he wants to go into graphic design and 
um, if he decides later on, you know, whatever he wants to do, I'll support him in that. I just want him to, um, you know, get his education as much as he wants. Think about entrepreneurship. Do not go to school to get trained to work for other people. Um, Cause you know, that's what this education system is good for. And as long as we keep that in our minds and we keep having those discussions, um, our, our kids will come out making better decisions. They have so many more opportunities than we had. Um, so, you know, that's where I am with it. I, I hope that I know the parents will relate and um, I want you to know that, you know, uh, I feel I feel your pain if you're having any pain. Um, but, you know, my, my heart is full and, and I'm so at peace knowing that, you know, he, he's a young man. He's a young man and it's time for him to do his thing, you know, and I, I never wanted to raise a coddled boy. Right. There's nothing worse than those boys that can't make uh, decisions on their own, um, not able to lead their families. And I, that's not the kind of young man I wanted to raise. So it, it's his time and I'm ready for him to step into that. And I'm very excited about it. So um, I will keep you all up to date on the departure plans. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned, I may have mentioned in another video, in another video but there, there was a or a podcast where there was a situation where he was a little snappy with me a few months back, right? I'd say something to him and it was just kind of like, mm, you know, like, okay, or just like abrasive. And I, I just pulled him up one day, like, you know, what's up with you? You good? He's like, um, well, you know, I wanted to talk to you. And I'm like, well, let's talk, you know, what's going on? Are you okay? I said, you know, the time is coming and counting down. He said, I know. And that's what it was. It was bothering him that, you know, the time was coming close. And he said he had talked to one of his counselors at school about it. And um, he didn't really want to approach me because he knew it was selfish, right? He knows how happy I am uh, on the continent. And, you know, I'm healthier, I'm happier. And, you know, the skin is glowing, the melanin's popping. And, and he witnessed it. He also got to experience it. So he knows what it is. Um, and it may not be for him at this time, but it will be there for him whenever he's ready. So we were able to talk about that. So if you notice a change in your children, don't get upset with them. Just kind of really have a discussion about, you know, are you really okay with this? And are you prepared? And what can I do to help you prepare better? You know, because this is the situation, right? You're going to go off and do your thing. And you can't be having you sit there, parents sit there and twiddle their fingers when they're ready for the second chapter of their lives, right? You know, and everybody has different opinions about that. Some people like to be up under their children and some people build their whole existence around their children and they can't imagine their lives without them. Um, and you know, more power to those folks, but I've always been an adventurous person. I've always been a person that traveled. I have friends all over the world and, um, I feel like there are times during raising children when you sacrifice, you sacrifice a great deal. If you parenting properly, right? You sacrifice a lot. You sacrifice your time, your energy, uh, some of your aspirations because you want to make sure that your children are okay. But, um, you know, before we were parents, before we were mothers, before we were fathers, we were individuals, we were people. So, you know, you got to figure it out for yourself, but I want to let you know that it's going to be okay, right? We're going to be okay. And our children are going to be fine. Our adults are going to be fine. And now it's that time, right? Everybody needs to take care of themselves. So I just want to send my blessings. Thank you all for listening as usual. I will keep you updated and we counting down y'all. The time is coming. So I cannot wait. Send you blessings. We'll talk soon.